everyone, Cave Girl here, here today to make a video all about the newest cage I just got for my hamster Paisley. So yes, Paisley got the IKEA detail for a new enclosure, which I have been wanting for such a long time. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about one, all the different enclosures I have used for her and the ones I've experienced. Two, my thoughts on the IKEA detail and how it's working. She's been in here for a little over a day and I'm just going to talk about my basic thoughts and then maybe I'll do an update in the future in case anything changes with it. So yeah, let's get started. I'm excited. So I am moved into the new pet room. Kinda. Not really. We still need to finish up a couple things but I was able to move Paisley in. I still have to move the rabbits in. I now have two rabbits <laughs> and I also have to move in the guinea pigs and the leopard geckos. So that all is still a work in progress but Paisley has been moved in. At the end of this video I will be doing a cage tour of her enclosure and I really hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get started. I have used now three different kinds of enclosures for Paisley. I started off using a bin cage and then I upgraded her to a tank and now she is in the detolf. So let's start off with the first enclosure I ever used and was used to the most which was bin cages. I have been using bin cages for a couple years now. I use them for all my mi mice whenever I had mice. Let's talk about the pros to the bin cage. It was incredibly cheap. I used a 50 gallon bin cage. Um, it only cost me $20 with a top and a bottom. And it worked really nicely for a lot of my animals. So it was cheap, it was big at the time, and it, cause it met the minimum requirements. Like the minimum requirements in the United States, I believe is 450 square inches. It was around 500 square inches. So it was above minimum. Then after that, some other pros is um, it was very light, which is one thing that I like about enclosures is whenever they're easy to move because I used to have to dump my bedding out and you know it made it really easy to do. Now some cons. These might revolve around my specific hamster because Paisley is a very active hamster. She gets bored very easily. She's a little crazy to be honest. <laughs> So we had some issues with the bin enclosure. One, it was too small for her. She needs a large space. And the reason for that is she began to bar chew so much. Um, you have to DIY the ventilation on your bin cage, which is another con for me, is I had to cut the plastic and put mesh gridding on, which is very difficult. And the mesh gridding oftentimes started to come off of my bin. And then I would have like my mice escape mainly. Paisley never escaped, but my mice used to escape all the time and that was very stressful. Um, so that was a con to it, but then again, that was my fault with making it because I didn't have the proper tools. So you need to be ready to DIY a bin cage. But, and I put my mesh grid on the front, which meant she could chew the bars. So that is a habit of Paisley's. She chews on things that she's not supposed to. She does it super loud. So at night, cause she's always in my bedroom, she used to chew on the bars and I used to have to literally put her in the bathroom for the night because she was so loud. And I didn't like that because I have a lot of cats. So I didn't want them to be bothering her, <laughs> but we had to do it. So we used to have to block her off um, because she used to chew so loud. Uh, another con to it is it doesn't look that nice, which for me is kind of a big deal because now that I'm moving into this new pet room, I really wanted really nice looking enclosures, look very neat, you know, aesthetically pleasing, but still per have a very good purpose for your animal. And if you like the bin cages, I love them whenever I use them. Again, for me, it was just the look of them, but they're awesome for like rescuing. So I still have bin cages. So in case I ever need to rescue, I use them for that. So they work in a lot of ways, but they're not the nicest looking to be honest. And yeah, the DIY part, yeah. So overall, it cost me $20. It met the minimum requirements, and it, it was a pretty big space for Miss Paisley, and it really filled up nicely. Um, another thing I remember from mine was whenever I put the mesh gridding on the mesh grids on the front, it was kind of a problem because then the bedding could come out. So make sure if you are going to put it in the front, if you don't have a hamster that chews bars, because for me this is just my hamster. Um, make sure you put it a little bit higher up so you can put the proper amount of bedding, because I do need a couple of inches maybe even a little bit more to burrow. So there's that. Moving on, I then upgraded Paisley to a aquarium tank because she was just nonstop chewing, <laughs> nonstop. 
and I kind of got sick and tired of it, and I wanted to get her a nicer looking enclosure too. So I got her, I believe, a 50 gallon, it was a 40 between 50 gallon tank. I was told it was a 50 gallon, but I don't know if it was that big. But anyways, it was originally used for a turtle, so I didn't buy it personally, but yeah, let's get started. So for me, it didn't cost anything, but normally they'll cost pretty high up their tanks whenever they start getting bigger, but $50 during the Petco sale or the PetSmart sale, Petco or PetSmart, the dollar per gallon sale where there'll be a dollar per gallon. So $50 is the least amount you can get for a 50 gallon tank. So yeah. So a couple of things, it was nice looking, although mine personally had a lot of residue on it and it was secondhand, so I recommend really trying to clean it. Mine had some staining on the glass that I could not get off. So think about that because you can get them secondhand, but make sure you're getting one that maybe looks nicer if that's what you're looking for, because some of them are very dirty, like mine for example was. So yeah, um, it was big, although I did notice that it seems smaller than my bin cage. My bin cage, I used to be able to put so much stuff in it and I'd be like, oh my gosh, she's gonna have so much fun in here. But then whenever I got her into the 50 gallon tank, which was around the same size as the bin cage, it felt smaller and I have no idea why. It was so much harder to put stuff in it and rearrange it properly. I don't know why, that was just my personal feeling that I noticed, it was kind of weird. Um, so yeah, it was nice looking, it was big, it was reusable, so that's one thing I like is that, you know, you can use an aquarium tank for fish, mice, hamsters, all sorts of animals, um, hermit crabs, like that's the thing I like. Same thing with the bin cages, they are also reusable. So there's that, that's all really nice. Now for some cons. Um, they're expensive, they're a lot more expensive than other things, um, that's the main problem. Ventilation too, like... You know, it's pretty expensive and ventilation is always something that comes into question uh, with these kinds of enclosures. Uh, it was heavy, so heavy. It was very hard to move. And for me, that's kind of difficult because I like being able to move my enclosures um, pretty easily. It just makes it a lot more enjoyable whenever I can move it without the hassle of needing someone else to help me carry it. So that for me was a little bit of a problem. Um, and again, it was just too small for Paisley, you know? And she started, it was easy to chew because it had a rubber lining around the top. So Paisley would hang from the rubber lining and chew the rubber lining, which is not good at all because she's pretty much ingesting plastic. So I became a really, I had to then completely lower the amount of bedding I had to give her. So with both of her previous enclosures, she never had enough bedding to burrow and really enjoy. So they were small and she didn't have enough bedding, but I would rather not give her enough bedding and not let her chew plus and have her not chew plastic than her have enough bedding and ingest plastic. So yeah, that was mainly a problem. Another thing is with both of those, I could not fit in the sand bath, which I always wanted to give her. I just could never fit one in. And it was kind of a, a problem. Also, I could never find play sand anywhere. So that was another problem. <laughs> I could never find play sand, but that's a separate topic. <laughs> Um, okay, so moving on to the Detolf. So the Detolf's measurements, because the other ones are in gallons, it's pretty easy to look up like how big is, you know, that stuff's easy. But the Detolf, the inside of it is 61.5 by 15.5 inches, which is 950 square inches of space. And then the outside, I'm sorry that I'm looking at my notes, but I, I, I don't have my glasses on because they're broken. <laughs> Therefore, I can't see anything. The outside is 64. Um, 1 8 inches and 16 and 3 4 inches. So it's a little bit bigger because of the wooden edges on it. So that does, so that did add some like sizing to it, although that is not included with the actual space inside the Detolf. Um, another thing is that the height of it, it's nearly 14 inches. It's like 13.7 inches tall, which for me, it's, it's, it's a pretty good height. I do wish it was maybe just a little bit taller. That way I could pack in some more um, bedding without risking her bar chew. That's my main concern right now with this enclosure is her bar chewing. Because <laughs> I really, I hate it. It's, it's so annoying. And also it's not healthy or safe for her to bar chew. So yeah, the price of it is $59.99. Um, so it's $60 pretty much, not including shipping. But that's a pretty good price for a enclosure that's 
That's like 950 square inches of space. This enclosure is an equivalent to a 90 gallon tank, which is pretty good, um, like awesome. 90 gallons are very expensive. The least amount you can find 90 gallon for brand new is $90. So the dollar per gallon sale, which only comes around a couple times a year. So other than that, they do get pretty pricey. And again, they're heavy. So this is a very great, awesome option. And I see why they are so popular among the hamster community because they work great. So let's move on to the pros and cons. So pros, it's big. I love how big it is. It is a very good size. I was able to fit in a lot of really awesome toys for her and she's already making tunnels and clearly enjoying it and burrowing and doing all that. So that is really awesome. Okay, the price of it is amazing. I mean, it's 60 bucks. Of course, that doesn't include the top, which I only had to pay like 20 bucks for the top. So overall, it's like $80 for this huge enclosure. Um, it's easy to build, kind of, it's kind of easy to build. Building it, you need someone to help you build it. Um, if you follow the detolf instructions, it can get a little bit rough. <laughs> um, you have to follow the instructions to do it, but the, it has like these little plastic or rubber, I get. I think they're supposed to be more rubbery, but they're very hard and you have to snap the glass into place, which is very stressful because the one glass, the one glass piece is in and the other one you're putting in. So you're trying to get it to connect into this little um, piece of plastic, which has these slits in it. And it's so stressful because this one over here is like going like this. This one you're trying to not break because for hours at least, it was so hard to get in. Like I had to like pop it into place. Well, my dad had to do it. He had to get a screwdriver or a flathead. I thought I had one <laughs> near me. And he had to pry the, the two pieces apart and jam it in, very difficult. Um, but after you get that second piece of glass in, it does become a little bit sturdier, so it is easier to put the third one in, but it's still difficult because of the whole snapping in thing. So it is pretty stressful, but honestly, it's better than like having to carry up a 90 gallon tank, although this was also very heavy. So you will need help transporting it because it was a very, very heavy enclosure <laughs> to carry up the steps. Um, like just in the boxes, yeah. Side note, it comes with a ton of plastic, like not plastic, um, it comes with a lot of plastic, but like a lot of cardboard. So that's also really nice because then you can make stuff for your hamster out of it. So yeah, so yeah, it was pretty much it was easy to assemble other than the, the only thing that was a hassle was getting them to pop into place and then you're pretty much done. And then getting it onto like its back was really easy. I just, my, I tipped it back and my brother grabbed underneath and then we put it on the little shelving unit that I'm gonna talk about in a moment. So other than that, it was pretty easy to set up. So yeah, some other pros to it is it's light once it's together. It is heavy, but it is lighter than a tank, you know, which I really like. Um, Multi-purpose, because if you're done with it and you don't want a hamster, you could definitely make it into a shelf if you just keep the extra glass pieces. Um, you could use it for mice, which you can use with the other things, but I just feel like it's a pretty interesting enclosure and you can probably do a lot of different things with it. You can split it down the middle um, if you add one of the shelves so then you can have multiple hamsters living in it, not together. So Syrians do not co-have them, but split it down the middle and possibly cover up the glass. And then they can live in separate areas in the same tank, which is pretty cool. So yeah, when it comes with it, like you have a little glass panel that comes with it. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, cons. It is a little flimsy feeling, honestly. Um, once you get that third piece of glass in, it does tighten up, but the metal bars on the inside do feel kind of flimsy. So I'll just say that. Um, you have to make the lid, which can be a little bit stressful because the measurements of the IKEA Detolf are very weird. <laughs> so it's kind of, it was a stressful experience. Um, also, you're using thin wood, so it's also like, how do I connect them together? Um, do I? I hot glued mine, which probably isn't a good idea. And then you're gonna have to staple on mesh. So there's that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, the metal bars, again, they kind of like bang up against the glass every once in a while. So that's another concern is that she's gonna start chewing those. But so far she hasn't, because so far she's still exploring. But let's hope she chills which for me is my biggest concern with Paisley is her being very loud. 
because I, I, need, I need to sleep at night, people. I need to sleep at night. <laughs> Another part of it that's a little bit of an iffiness with me is it is kind of narrow the, of it overall. I wish it was just a couple inches wider. That way I could fit in some more things. Um, yeah, I just feel like I could have, I, I thought I'd be able to add more things to it to keep her occupied, but I feel like I can't really. I mean, she clearly, she like once you see, she has a lot of stuff in there and she's making a lot of tunnels and she's enjoying it, but I wish it was just a little bit wider so I could just add a little bit of more things. Um, but yeah, that's my only other problem because like in videos, it looks huge. Um, and I remember in one YouTube video, someone said, oh, this, this enclosure is a little bit thin. And I was like, oh, they're thin and narrow. And I was like, it's narrow? And then I looked it up online, I was like, wow, it is narrow. You know, you don't really think that by watching YouTube videos, but now that I've owned it, it is a little narrow. So yeah. Okay, so this is the other thing that you need to think about is if you need a stand that is a little bit shorter than the actual detail. This is because if you put a stand it on a stand that is bigger than it or equal size to it, then the two resting parts will be here. And the resting parts, like the bottoms of the shelf, they then have a little gap but before the, the glass starts. And if you have it equal, then the glass will start to bow and eventually break. So I use the Kalax to put under it, which is a um, shelving unit that I saw Pickles Pet Shop use. So I use that and let me tell you, it was a pain in the butt to build. It was, I have a lot of Ikea furniture and I built a lot of Ikea furniture. I survived building an Ikea couch, an Ikea bed, an Ikea, two Ikea beds. You know, survived building all this stuff. And the k -Lax was the most difficult thing. It had so many little wooden dowels that would not go into place. So. Do not get frustrated, just be careful. And maybe try to drill out the holes a little bit to make them a little bit better to go in. Because the problem is, is like the dowels don't go into the plywood holes because they're not, they have wood throughout them. Like they're not full holes all the way. So it's very difficult to build. I broke a couple of things on it. Be careful when building it, have patience. I didn't. So yeah, the Kalex works because it's the proper length and you can get them both at the same time and it has storage, storing, storing, storage, <laughs> storage for your hamster's supplies. So it's awesome, but it's a pain in the butt to build. Okay, okay. Now, moving on to the top. I'm gonna throw up a clip of my top, which I'd say do not build yours like this. You need to build two separate tops for your enclosure. And this is because it is very difficult to get it on and off because it's so big. Um, the other thing is, if you wanna hang things off of the metal mesh, you need two tops, that way you can reach in and clip it on. But for me, I only made one top. <laughs> so my little coconut hide that I have is pretty hard to get on and off. So there's that. Really make two lids. Um, but let's talk about how much the lid cost. It cost me about $20 and I bought from Lowe's. I bought a one and a half inch by eight foot wooden stick. I don't know what to call it. And that cost me about $3 and I got two of them. And both of those ended up being enough for a full top. So I actually bought an extra um, grid or like an extra piece of wood and I only actually need those two eight foot things. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you measure them ahead of time because that is a little bit of an issue and make sure they are not bowed. That is one thing that I noticed um, is it's kind of difficult to build with bowed wood. So maybe get a little bit higher quality wood for it because the problem is, is if you get a really bowed piece of wood, your hamster could probably push up on it and it won't fit properly and then you'll have a whole dilemma on your hands. Um, those cost me about, like I said, $3 each. So all together, $6. And then I bought that extra piece of wood, which was a dollar. And then the metal mesh I bought cost me $11. And you can get a lot of it for very expensive, but I bought the cheapest one there and it did wonderful. So yeah. So yeah. You will need supports on your lid. Um, because it's such a long top, I would really recommend making a little bit of like middle supports just to make sure it's very sturdy because it is kind of an odd shape not odd shape but like it's, it's pretty narrow so 
be kind of flimsy. I'd also say put little handles on it just to be adorable. I didn't put handles on it. I'm gonna have to get some because I've seen people do that and it looks really cute. So yeah. So yeah. Now let's go into giving you the cage tour and everything. Um, I'm very excited. Paisley seems to be loving it. I did not film me setting it up. I do apologize. I wanted to and then I didn't have my phone on me and I was like, I want to get my hamster moved in here. We're setting it up. <laughs> so I set it up because I have no patience. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's begin. This is her little food bowl which has uh, Missouri rat and mouse food and a seed mix and some mealworms to add some protein and that's a little bowl that I got from Walmart. Then you can see that there's a little like wooden bridge and all sorts of millet spray, oat spray, and hay all throughout this just to give her more stuff to find and pouch and eat and enjoy. And then here is a cork tunnel, which I thought she'd like. Uh, there's a little ladder going into that box hide, that cardboard hide I made with different channels and stuff. Um, this uh, bedding mixture is her old bedding and her new bedding, all care fresh. And as you can see, she loves to pack her toys full of it. It's pretty cute. Uh, this big piece of driftwood she does like climbing on, which is pretty nice. Um, I thought she'd like it just to burrow around and stuff like that, which actually all throughout right here, there actually is a little tunnel. Uh, all throughout here, there were tunnels. And this is actually a foraging toy that I got. It's corrugated cardboard and I stuff seeds in it, hoping that she'd like playing with it. And also there's all sorts of treats and stuff. There's also a little treat ball here, which has like rice pops and then here's a bendy bridge which has toilet paper in it so she can you know pull that out and use it for her other nest here's her silent storm wheel i think is what it's called but it's really awesome super quiet really big for her i love it and here is her here there, here's paisley uh she was being pretty active whenever i was filming this that's actually where her like her pouched food is that's where she keeps all of her food it's kind of weird she keeps it out in the open but that's where she puts it this is her sand bath um and there's paisley again but yeah she is really enjoying the sand bath and it is pretty cool um i have some millet spray in there her water bottle is actually hot glued there and yeah that's the whole entire enclosure i really like it it's pretty big for her and again like the sand bath she's loving it uh yeah, there she goes. She's being real cute today, as you can see. <laughs> um, yeah. Now we're just gonna go down the tank, and that little box has actually little compartments. So one's supposed to be like for all of her food, but in reality she puts all of her food right there, which is actually pretty funny. So yeah, that's Miss Paisley. 